Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. This is the series on All About Electrical, okay? I previously did a video, or a video series, that was entitled something like uh, Home Electrical, or uh, Basic Electrical 101, something like that. Uh, I found a lot of people uh, had interest in that series, uh, anywhere from homeowners to uh, maintenance technicians and, and uh, uh, apprentices, uh, pre-apprentices, um, just a lot, of, just a wide variety of people uh, looking uh, at some of those videos. So uh, I wanted to get back into that and and bring to you a series dedicated um, to nothing but electrical. Okay, so this video is the first in that series, and we have to start with safety. Think safety, safety first, all that. Uh, it's a cliche, but it's also very important, okay? Don't just jokingly say, think safe or safety first. You have to seri take this seriously because uh, electricity can kill you, okay? All right, so the first thing we got to talk about is uh, uh, conductors, okay? What conducts electricity? And when I say electricity, I'm talking about the movement of electrons. We'll get into all that later, but um, let's just talk about what uh, can carry the electrical or carry the electricity around. Um, Non-ferrous metals such as copper and aluminum are most common, uh, but gold and silver also conduct electricity and many others. Um, the uh, ferrous metals such as uh, uh, carbon steel and, and stainless steel and um, uh, mild steels and uh, things in our everyday life like uh, um, uh, fence posts or fences and, and light posts and, and, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, all metals in general carry electricity. Uh, water can carry electricity. So if you have a moist, saturated ground, um, the ground can, can conduct electricity uh, if it's saturated or wet enough. Um, our bodies conduct electricity. We are made up of 70%, 75-ish percent water. Uh, so our bodies can conduct electricity, okay? So that's why we're talking about this. We're all talking, basically talking about um, the, the flow of electrons through our body and then try to, um, to, to make that, sure that doesn't happen. Um, so now let's talk about, um, uh, though we talked about what conducts electricity, what is an insulator of electricity, meaning what will, what will not uh, conduct the flow of electrons, and that is things like plastic, uh, rubber, uh, wood, uh, glass, okay? Those items will not conduct electricity. Um, so with that being said, now we know what can conduct electricity, now what we, now we know what will insulate uh, um, electricity, let's talk about resistance, okay? Now, Let's just, I'm just going to talk about your skin, okay? If you are soaking wet or you're sweating, your body has a lower resistance and can conduct electricity a lot easier than if your skin was dry. That doesn't mean that if your skin is dry that you are immune from uh, electrocution. It's not what it means at all. It just means that the chances of you conducting electricity or running the risk of electrocution uh, is higher if your skin is damp, moist, or wet, okay? So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, wear proper clothing, okay? Uh, Well-insulated rubber-soled shoes or boots, not open toe, not barefoot, okay? Um, uh, cotton clothes, uh, in some cases long sleeve, but um, basically it's all about the shoe, okay? Um, if, uh, if you are doing any troubleshooting, make sure that you use the one hand rule, okay? Uh, if you are um, in an electrical panel or you're doing anything with electricity, use one hand, okay? Because if you are using both hands, one hand is grounded, the other hand is working the screw or, the, or, the, or whatever, um, and, and you come in contact with a live wire, the power, the electricity will flow right through your heart. And that's not good. If you use the one hand rule, the only thing, you, this hand is behind your back or wherever it is, not touching anything. If 
an accident happens, the flow of electrons can only go from here down through your foot, thus potentially missing your heart. Also, if you're wearing the proper shoes, you're not going to be conducting electricity, and hopefully you will uh, reduce the risk of electrical shock. Okay, So remember, one hand rule, always, or at least every possible chance that you get, one hand rule. Um, the other thing, well, let's talk about like electrical meters and things of that sort. If you're using an electrical meter, again, you can use the one hand rule because you don't need both probes inside of a piece of equipment. You can uh, connect one to the neutral wire and use your other one to go around. Um, you can, you can, uh, uh, and, 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 and other types of applications where it's low voltage or, or whatever, you can, you can connect it to the chassis if the chassis is ground. So you can do stuff like that. You can use an alligator clip like on one side of your meter and then probe around with the other side. Uh, sometimes you can't do that and you have to, you know, use both probes, but again, just try to use the one hand roll whenever possible. Okay, um, as far as tools are concerned, uh, most of the tools nowadays comes with some type of coating on the handles, okay? Uh, make sure that that coating is not chipped or damaged in any way. Um, when they're brand new, they're great. But over time, you can get nicks, cuts, and dings in them, and, and if your skin is touching that uh, metal or whatever that tool is made of, then you can conduct electricity through there. So make sure the tools are in good, operable condition. Um, never, ever horseplay around any type of electrical. Um, if, and if somebody else is working on electrical, never, boo, never go in and startle anybody um, because... Uh, um, you're working in a live uh, panel a lot of times, and you know if, if somebody's startled and you jump, you can end up touching uh, something you didn't intend to. So never ever horseplay. Always, always assume that everything is hot, meaning that it's live, it has power to it. Um, never ever take anybody's word that they turned the power off. Always confirm that they turned the power off. Never ever assume that it's off. Always assume that it's on. And let's see what else. Let's make sure the extension cords are in good operable condition. Make sure the cords on all your power tools are in good operable condition. No cuts, dings, or frays. Make sure the grounding plugs are still there and intact. Um, if you're using any type of power equipment or power tools in a wet location, use an adapter or a GFCI plug to plug your extension cord or your power tool into to ensure that uh, you are as safe as you possibly can be. Okay? Never stand in a puddle of water while you're trying to uh, use a power tool. Okay? Just, those are some common sense things. Okay, so this is just a real quick video with some basic safety information. Okay? Um, where there's some things I didn't cover like lockout and tag out, but uh, we're going to get in depth into those in later videos. Uh, so I just want you guys to be aware that electricity is dangerous. It can kill you. It doesn't take a lot of electricity to do that. Um, so be safe every chance uh, you uh, or every time you are working with electrical. And, uh, and we'll see you guys on the next video.